and a volcan where bleak mountains rise, or whose brown ridgy tops now the dusky cloud flies. Deep sunk in a valley, a wild flower did grow, and her name was Finvola, the gem of the road. Helen Creighton always wondered if it began with her call, a cap some babies are born with from the tissue that cloaks them in the womb. Many folk cultures believed it gave them second sight, an ability to see what others could not. In 1899, Creighton was born that way, and believed she did have a special gift. She called it her intuitions. She certainly had an intuition for finding the human truths between the facts and fancy of folklore, along with an uncanny gift for getting people to open up to her. Combined with a legendary toughness and perseverance, those intuitions made her one of the most productive and important folklorists of the 20th century. Let me mind it all. Do you like the song? Yes, very much. You want me to sing the rest? Yes, if you will, please. Okay. Her archives, which she donated to her native Nova Scotia, include 40,000 items, audio tapes, films, photos, journals, and over 4,000 songs. Between 1932 and 1988, she published 15 books that helped launch the North American folk revival. Clary Croft is a storied Nova Scotia folk singer, scholar, and Creighton biographer. He worked with her for the last 15 years of her life. Helen told me the most important thing she did was save it. Forever, Croft says. Now her collection is the most used in the public archives, constantly being reworked into dance, film, contemporary songs, animation, ballets, opera, musical theater. It just never stops. Among those who've trawled the Creighton archives are the internationally renowned Rankin family of Nova Scotia. The more I learn about her, says Heather Rankin, the more her life inspires me as a woman, devoting her life to her work at a time women were expected to get married, raise a family. She must have been a bit of a spitfire. Creighton's folklore career began as pure serendipity. She was becoming a successful journalist and radio host when, in 1928, she attended a picnic on Halifax Harbor. A local told her old pirate stories. She asked where she could hear more and was directed to Enos Hartland, who told stories and sang songs. He pointed to the night sky and said, See them stars? That's how many songs I used to be able to sing. Creighton later called that her path of destiny. If she could find this much talking to two people, how much more was out there? She was directed to Devil's Island, where she collected scores of songs from Ben Henneberry and his family. Her career had begun, for which she was remarkably unprepared. With little musical background, unable to speak Gaelic, French, German, or native languages, though she collected in those communities, as well as from African Canadians. At first, she lugged a melodeon around in a wheelbarrow, picking out the tune while transcribing the lyrics. Later, she did get recording equipment. But Creighton always had a genius for getting people to invite her into their lives so she could record them as they actually used the songs while sewing, piling hay ricks, mending nets, pounding wool, working the mines. She documented everything, songs, tales, myths, dances, riddles, games, remedies, superstitions. It made her collection among the most complete portraits ever compiled of early 20th century folk life. One man grumbled he'd sung enough, he had to shave. He lathered up, saw her still smiling expectantly, and sang while he shaved. She persuaded a stroke victim that singing would make him feel better. After a few songs, he said, you'd bewitch the devil. Creighton could be cagey. She generally approached the women first, collecting their songs, then asking them to introduce her to the men. It kept the women from worrying if she was after their men, and put the men on notice that their wives knew her. Still, she received several wedding proposals. One old guy pledged to shave off his beard and even get a new eye. In 1933, she and colleague Doreen Sr. were stuck in the rain, and Anne Greenow invited them into her house. 
She sang the Nova Scotia song, which Creighton later published. Known as Farewell to Nova Scotia, it became a global folk standard and unofficial anthem of the province. Farewell to Nova Scotia, the sea-bound coast, your mountains dark and dreary be. Oh, and I am far away on the briny ocean, tossed and feel you ever heave a sigh. But it was not her songs that made Creighton famous. It was a best-selling book of supernatural tales, Blue Nose Ghosts. Thereafter, she was known as the Ghost Lady. Like many folk scholars of her era, Creighton can be faulted for offering a sanitized portrait of folk life. There were no body or radical songs in her collections, and she criticized folklorists who did include them. But that pales next to her love of folk culture. She was devoted to popularizing the songs, becoming a familiar presence on radio and TV, insisting that traditional singers be presented alongside commercial performers, and paid the same. She also encouraged people to get creative with the old songs, to make them their own because they were their own, the shared legacy of those who came before. She's given back to the province material that was rightfully theirs in the first place. Creighton died in 1989. She asked to be cremated with her call. I think her impact is yet to be fully realized, says Heather Rankin. Her work added color to a picture of the most beautiful parts of Nova Scotia's history, the music and traditions. The more technology takes over our lives, the more people are going to go looking for that. Will you ever